We would like to welcome you to this week's edition of the St. Mark Spark. It has been some time since we've been able to come together here on Wednesday, or in this case Thursday, to gather around God's Word and to join in this discussion. Our reading for today comes to us from the Acts of the Apostles. It's Acts chapter 16, verses 25 through 40. I invite you with open ears and with soft hearts to listen as God speaks to us through God's Word. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, since he supposed that all the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. When morning came, the magistrates sent the police, saying, Let those men go. And the jailer reported the message to Paul, saying, The magistrates sent word to let you go. Therefore, come out now and go in peace. But Paul replied, They have beaten us in public, uncondemned men who are Roman citizens, and have thrown us into prison, and now they are going to discharge us in secret? Certainly not. Let them come and take us out themselves. The police reported these words to the magistrates, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Roman citizens. So they came and apologized to them, and they took them out and asked them to leave the city. After leaving the prison, they went to Lydia's house, and when they had seen and encouraged the brothers and sisters there, they departed. May this God's word speak to our hearts, our minds, our spirits. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A little backstory on the Apostle Paul. You might remember, of course, that at the beginning of the book, The Acts of the Apostles, it is the story of Paul, who was known as Saul in those days, who was the chief persecutor of the early church. Paul, who was present and was there basically in charge of all the coats uh, when there was the killing of the first martyr, Stephen, for the early church. Paul, who breathed down threats on early followers of Christ, early followers of the way. Paul, who was on his way and headed to Damascus, where he was going to go and, and root out any Christians, any followers of Christ who were in that area. On the way there... He was struck blind, knocked down off his horse, heard the voice of Jesus saying, Why do you persecute me? There is then not an immediate conversion experience, but it starts a catalyst of sorts to a conversion experience for Saul, who then became known as Paul. Saul, who was the earliest antagonist to the church becomes the church's greatest apostle the greatest promoter the greatest evangelist of the early church but to do this work is to upset the apple cart to do this work is to disturb the status quo to do this work is to run afoul of those who are already in power those who want to maintain the peace or at least the peace not that god gives but the peace the world gives peace that comes through subverting anything that is going to be a challenge to the way things are. And so Paul oftentimes felt, uh, oftentimes would 
find himself being pulled before courts. Paul who would be thrown into prison. Paul who would be beaten. Paul who went through all these kind of maladies. Paul who also would experience shipwrecks and the like. Paul who we believe was called into Rome and was executed there eventually. Paul who suffered much for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here in this story, it's one of the great stories from the Acts of the Apostle. Paul is in jail with his right-hand man, Silas. You think this is a time for despondency? You think this is a time for maybe questioning God? This is a time to ask, why me? Why am I in this situation? But it says, it begins the passage saying, about midnight, Paul and Silas are not focused on themselves. Instead, they are praying. They are singing hymns to God. They are doing this for themselves. They're doing this for their connection with the divine. But what's also happening here is, is it says the prisoner prisoners are listening to them. Even in prison, even in this dire circumstance, Paul and Silas do not forget who they are, and they most certainly do not forget whose they are. Suddenly, it says there is an earthquake. This fantastic earthquake shakes even the foundation of the prison, that the doors of the prison then are swung wide open. Whatever kind of shackles they were in, they are now unbound. Not just Paul, not just Silas, but all of the prisoners. Now, it's after midnight. The jailer is sleeping. The jailer is trying to get some Z's. And the jailer wakes up. He sees all the doors that are open. He believes in human nature. He has likely been a jailer for a while. If the door is open, that means that these prisoners have escaped. These prisoners who are wrongly in prison, but also these prisoners who are there for, for all kinds of misdeeds. The thought is from the jailer, they have run off. He then, because he is responsible for the prisoners, that his life at that point is forfeit. He draws his sword. He is about ready to commit suicide. It's right there. And then he hears a loud voice from Paul saying, do not harm yourself. Do not harm yourself for we all are here. It was not just Paul and Silas who were there. It was the other prisoners as well. We don't hear a whole lot about them after this, but it's something about the prayers that Paul and Silas were lifting up. It's something about the hymns they were singing to God. It was something about that melody and that beauty that was going on here in the jail that changed these men's, these prisoners' hearts as well. In the hardest of times, in the most difficult of circumstances, they were still praying. They were still singing. This is something that, that ties into our scripture, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday from James chapter 6. It says, is anybody hurting, you should pray. Is anybody rejoicing, you should sing songs to God. This whole part about how prayer needs to be so integral to our lives, our connection with the divine and all of these things. When you're at the highest high, sing praises. When you're at the lowest low, pray for help. If someone else is is struggling, carry their burden, lift them up in prayer, but also lift them up with your arms and with your lives. This is something that Paul and Silas are doing. It changes the hearts of the other prisoners. And then it does something amazing. In this world where we see it's us against them because we vote differently, we love differently, we think differently, we welcome differently. In this world of so many divisions where we are looking so much at it is us versus them, Paul and Silas did not see it as it was the two of them versus the system, it was the two of them versus the jailer. It was the two of them against their incarceration. Paul and Silas are use every opportunity to increase the fold of followers that are Christians. The jailer is obviously moved. He rushes in. He falls down trembling at Paul and Silas's feet. And he asks, 
maybe the most important question. He asked these men who until recently have been in chains, these men who have been locked up. He asked these these men who the world would write off completely. He asked these men, the man who was in power, asked these men, what must I do to be saved? It is the question that we all should ask, the question we all must ask must ask what should i do to be saved what must i do to have whatever is inside of you inside of me how am i saved not just for the next life but how am i saved here and now and paul says believe on the lord jesus christ and you will be saved you and your household it's a pretty amazing thing because this feels like the very standard way that oftentimes we hear in the church. If you confess with your, believe in your heart and confess with your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. That's what it sounds like. But there's something more that happens here. He says, Paul tells the, the man, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. But not just you, you and your household. There is a generosity to salvation for us. There is a wideness we sing in the hymn a wideness in God's mercy. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house, the jailer who lives there on the premises. And then the jailer does something beautiful. The same hour of the night, he takes them, he washes their wounds. He washes their wounds and then he and his entire family are baptized without delay. It is the washing of the wounds of the prisoners. It is the baptism, the washing away of our sins, the, the anointing, the claiming in these baptismal waters for both this man and for his family. There is so much happening here in the nighttime. The light is shining. The jailer brings them out, sets food before them, and they all rejoice. The family all rejoices that he has become a believer in God. This story is enough. This story is enough for when things are difficult, for when things are hard, when things feel hopeless, and there is no way forward, trusting that God will make a way. But in this freedom for Paul and Silas, they could have rushed off. But if they had rushed off and said, that freedom is just for me, then what about the other prisoners? If that freedom is just for me, what about the jailer? If that freedom is just for me, what about the jailer's family? For them, freedom meant stain because it was not just what Paul and Silas valued was being unchained. What they valued is that the shackles would fall off the souls of those around them, the shackles of the way that the world does it, the shackles that are summed up by punitiveness and thinking that is justice. The rest of the story comes and the morning comes the magistrates send someone else send to the police to let them go and paul's not having it paul says you arrested us in public you made a public spectacle of that you you bound us up even though we are roman citizens you condemned us threw us into prison you did all this very publicly and now you're going to try to discharge us in secret you're going to try to drop a news story on friday afternoon that you are going to try to just wash us off the books and paul says meganoito paul says to the greek certainly not if the magistrates want to release us let them do it themselves this is a bold move this is a bold request and demand by somebody who is in prison but paul is trying to make this public paul is trying to show not just what happened to him negatively that everybody can see he's trying to get this so that the world can see and from that the magistrates upon hearing that these men were roman citizens they begin to fret they begin to worry and they go and they apologize they go and they ask for forgiveness they go and they lead them out and ask them to leave the city but they go to lydia's house 
because there they had brothers and sisters in Christ. There they had followers of the way. There they had people they had to encourage before they left that town. There's a lot that is happening here in just 15 verses. There's a lot that I hope speak to you wherever you are. But know that even your salvation, how wonderful that is, it's not just for you. And it's not just about you. The salvation that Paul experiences along the way, it is the salvation for the other prisoners. It is the salvation for the jailer. It is the salvation for the jailer's family. It is the salvation for all who witness this. It is also, if not salvation, if the salvation has already occurred, it is encouragement for others who are followers of the way. So may you be free and may you fly free, but also may you see your opportunity for freedom to serve other people, to encourage other people, to heal other people, to share this message of salvation with other people. This is the way, my friends. And this is the hope, and this is the life. May we all accept the salvation. May we share the salvation. And may we point, point to the one who sets us free this day and always. May God be with you all.